Climate change is an urgent and immediate threat that we need to address. And the reason is because you can see it all around you, that we have wildfires in California like never seen before, the tornadoes that rip through the southeast. Now the rivers are all overflowing in the Midwest. I mean, there's something happening all the time that it's not like the old climates we all remember from 20, 30 years ago. We face two real big problems globally. One is population growth. We're now at about 7.7 .7 billion people and we're expected to rise to about 10 billion in the not too distant future. So feeding 10 billion people becomes a big issue, particularly when we're also faced with this issue that the climate has been steadily changing. We think that we can use the expertise and the technology that we've been developing here at Salk and in other laboratories around the world to actually make an impact in drawing down that carbon dioxide, but also feeding this growing population. One central goal to the plant initiative is to get plants to capture more carbon dioxide from the atmosphere and store it in a really stable molecule called suberin um, as a way to mitigate the negative effects of climate change. So suberin, you could kind of think of it as the protective plastic around plant roots and trunks and stems. Um, it's a very densely packed form of carbon. While we know it uh, usually as cork, and cork is also formed in the root system in, in, in high amounts. And the great thing about suberin is, is um, that it is very resistant to degradation and that it holds many, many carbon atoms. So suberin is, a, is, is our way to lock away carbon very stably. We think that over the next five to 10 years, we can make a significant impact in selecting plants that not only feed people, and can survive in the face of changing climates and growing seasons, but also can store carbon in the soil and draw down that carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. Joanne Corey, our, our leader of this initiative and the person that runs the plant biology laboratory here, has really done the most seminal work in how plants adapt to different environments. The innovation is just that, you know, we remembered that, you know, that's what plants do. You don't need to build, you know, a big machine, you just need to use plants. The other innovative thing about our proposal, I think, is that we're using crop plants. And so crops are on the best land, and they also are grown everywhere, so it becomes a global program right away. And you don't have to have any new infrastructure to do it because farmers are already planting all those crops. One aspect related to the research going on in my lab is to understand how plants um, respond to their environment and how that affects which genes are turned on and which genes are turned off. And understanding those processes will be important in understanding how the plants can adapt to different growth conditions and different um, environments. My main research interest is to understand how roots grow and how do they sense the environment and how do they respond to the environment. One thing that makes me particularly excited about this initiative is the idea that the science is going to go outside the walls of the, of the Institute and potentially have a global impact. This plant initiative fits squarely in the original vision that Jonas had when he founded the Salk Institute, and that is to really benefit humans globally. And no better way to do this than to think about the one thing that does grow globally that feeds us uh, as well as it alters our climate, and that's plants. <laughs>